Welcome to the lecture on paired sample tests. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about paired sample t-test and paired sample Lisset test. In the previous lectures, I discussed that for both tests, we are using almost similar formula. But the difference is, in Lisset test, we assume that the population standard deviation is known and t-test, especially for small samples where we don't know the population standard deviation or we can't estimate the population standard deviation because of the small sample size. The difference in comparison to a two sample t-test, in paired sample, the populations are paired where we have population and we are measuring the same population in another time point. The difference is we have another time point difference. Example, this is the average blood sugar value. Before giving a drug, assume that we have 100 individuals, so N equals 100. After about 8 hours, we test again the blood sugar of same individual. All these 100 individuals in another time point. But this is, even though this is one population, this is like two populations, before drug population, after drug population. So we name the population mean is mu a1 and same population in another time point mu a2. In two sample case, we had two different populations. But now we have same population at different time point. What is the advantage of paired design? The advantage is in two sample case, we have totally different people in two populations. But in pair, same people in different time points. So the probability of having biological variations is less uh, in this pair design because same people are here, same people are here. So, but in pool case, one sample might be consist with more females and the other sample might consist with more males. So like that, we have to balance the two populations when we are doing the research. But in pair test, we don't need to balance much like in two sample case. So the error effect from biological variation is minimal in pair design. So that is one thing to remember. So how to do that? Like in other case, we have the first population mean and the second population mean. We will get one example where we are giving a drug to reduce the blood sugar. You all know that we can't test all the individuals from this group and the other group. Because of that, we have to take a mean. We will name that X bar A and we are taking another mean. We will name that X bar A2. How do you get this sample mean? We have to get in order to measure this x bar a and x bar b, we need to have different individuals for that. So those individuals are x1, x2, x3, like that we will take n number of individuals. And we, in the second time, we measure the same, the blood sugar of same people. So we will name that x1, the same individual, second measurement, x2, second measurement x3 second measurement and like that x n second measurement. Now you can understand that there should be a difference between the first value and the second value. So you can create another variable for the differences. So we will name them, them the difference of the first individual d1, difference of the second individual d2, difference of the third individual, d3. So like that we have dn. Now you can understand that we have another variable where we can create the mean for these differences. It is d bar. So the mean for the differences will be d bar. And we can calculate the standard deviation for this specific variable. Now, you can have a clue how are we going to test the hypothesis. 
So let's see how to do the hypothesis testing. So our another hypothesis for the hypothesis testing is mu a1 equals mu a2. I must recall you, please go and watch the lectures on null hypothesis, lecture on p-value, lecture on sampling distribution before watching this specific video. If you are clear about those videos, you can easily understand this video as well. And the alternative hypothesis will be, I told you, alternative hypothesis depends whether it is one tail case or whether it is two tail case. Okay, this time we will go for two tail case. So in two tail, we are interested in mu a1 does not equal to mu a2. So the difference can be either towards low side or towards higher side. Now, how to draw the null distribution? In two sample case, we had a problem because we need to have one null distribution to represent the both distributions. But here, it's not that difficult because we are having two values of the same population. Because of that, we can create null distribution easily. We have a variable for the differences d1, d2 till dn. So from this, what we can do is we can have created the standard deviation for the differences and we can create s d divided by the square root of n which is the standard error using this standard error we can create the null distribution where the mean should be zero because if the null hypothesis is true there should not be a difference between the two population and the standard deviation is the standard error now the observed difference what is the observed difference observed difference is x bar a1 and x bar A2. The difference between the sample means of the two occasions. This is from population 2 where mu bar mu A2. This is from mu A1. Now, if the difference between these two are in the rejection region of this sampling distribution, we have to identify the rejection region. If this difference is in the rejection region, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. If this difference is in null region, we can't reject the null hypothesis. I hope you are clear about this specific part. Now, what is the difference between is test and t-test? If you need more clear understanding, please watch my previous two videos on two sample case and one sample case where I explained with example. In this lecture, I am not going to do an example. I will just explain the difference between Z test and T test. Here, in null distribution, we know that in the rejection region, assume that our rejection region, we are interested in 5% rejection region. So, we know that in Z test, the cutoff point here in 2 tail case will be 1.96. But, in t test this will be if this is the z distribution t will be something like this so these are the rejection regions of the z distribution and this in t distribution the the rejection region will be slightly outer to the 1.96 so this is this should be something more than 1.96 and this also should be something more than 1.96. You have to find out the exact t value for the cutoff point in t table using the degrees of freedom. I explain how to find out the degrees of freedom, how to get the values from t table in my previous lectures. I hope you are clear about the Paired sample is a test and paired sample t-test.